Here are seven creative apps that I'm using right now with my elementary design students. Plus, I'll give you five other tools that I'm keeping my eyes on. My teaching assignment has shifted a little this year. Aside from an odd schedule filling PE class, I teach nine classes of ADST in fifth through seventh grades, three classes per grade. ADST stands for Applied Design, Skills and Technologies. It's a subject that one of my edu heroes, John Spencer, would surely love. The curriculum is simple and flexible. On the competency side is the design process, understanding, defining, ideating, prototyping, testing, making, and sharing. On the content side are a menu of modules that teachers and students are free to dive into and explore. They include computational thinking, computers and communication devices, digital literacy, drafting, 3D design, entrepreneurship and marketing, media arts, robotics, and more. It's a thrill to go to these spaces with elementary learners. Students at this age are fearless. They're curious, they're ready to create anything, and they're ready to expand their creative powers. If you're teaching in similar spaces, here is a list of tools, design challenges, and creative tasks that I've tried and recommend. I have no affiliation with any of these brands, products, or sites. Tool number one is Lego. Here are two design challenges and creative tasks. Partner building competition, tallest structure, and partner building design challenge, our dream home. I am blessed to have access to six Lego carts on wheels, enough pieces to keep a class of 25 busy. It's the timeless classic that gets kids talking, collaborating, and having fun right out of the gate in September. Time will evaporate quickly as they get to work with this creative masterpiece. Tool number two is Canva. Here are some design challenges and creative tasks I've used on this platform. Google Classroom header is a fun get to know Canva activity. A learning map poster is a great get to know the student activity. It includes selfie, family, passions, and areas of growth. Other posters include Remembrance Day, National Truth and Reconciliation Day, or School Spirit Days. And there are a whole set of poster design principles that I like to get into there. Logos include my personal logo or house team logo. Memes should be positive messages that inspire others. Image variations can include animated images or AI generated images. YouTube thumbnails and videos. Yes, Canva has a video editor, including an enormous stock library and comic strips. Canva for education accounts are free for teachers and their students. Still an unbelievably good deal. If you and your school still don't have these accounts, get on that immediately. Tool number three is called Pixlr. Here are some design challenges and creative tasks that I use on this platform. Cropping, color and texture adjustments, background removal, object removal, object replication, and layering. My students are having a ton of fun learning these skills in Pixlr, still the web's best free cloud-based photo editor. The freemium version includes some ads and a limit of three downloads per day, both tolerable conditions in my opinion. No accounts or logins are required. Tool number four is Tinkercad. Here are a couple of design challenges and creative tasks there. First is a no-brainer making 3D objects and experimenting, treating Tinkercad as a kind of sandbox, and then taking it to the next level, creating printable objects, which requires a tighter, stricter set of criteria in order for the final product to actually be printable. Save as a PNG file to share the visuals with others or save as an STL to print your design in 3D. Tinkercad allows me to create classes for my students so I can view their designs in real time from my own account. Tinkercad is completely free for educators and students. Tool number five is Minecraft. Here are some design challenges I've used. Build our school. Some of my students in the past have done phenomenal work on that. Build an ancient wonder of the world. That was something recommended or requested by my seventh graders last year. And design and build a secret base, a collaborative design challenge that received overwhelming support 
from three separate seventh grade classes this year. Minecraft requires Microsoft education accounts for students. The good news is that it works well in the cloud and students can collaborate on projects in real time, which is also very cool. I recommend co-creating success criteria and using Google Drawings as a place for students to cast their design visions before building. You will never see higher engagement in your classroom. I mean, it's Minecraft. Tool number six is Khan Academy. Here are a couple of learning activities that I've used there, an HTML and CSS course, and a JavaScript course. Because of the confined and controlled way that Khan Academy guides students from skill to skill in each coding language, it might look like a bit of a stretch to call these creative tasks, but they are. There's plenty of room for creative and fun interpretation at almost every step of the way through these courses. Ready to help your students learn how to code? Check out Khan Academy, which is still completely free. I've made a video on how to create a class in Khan Academy and post assigned learning activities in Google Classroom. The last and seventh tool that I've got to share with you is Common Sense Media. Now, bear with me, it may be the biggest stretch of all to call Common Sense Media a creative tool. There's not a ton of creative content here, but there is some, and it does an amazing job covering the curricular standards that I've got in digital literacy. In fifth grade, the Common Sense Media Digital Citizenship Curriculum includes topics like media balance, clickbait, gender stereotypes, digital friendships, cyberbullying, and news literacy. In sixth grade, it includes digital balance, phishing scams, online identity, chatting safety, digital drama, and credible news. And in seventh grade, my media use, big data, digital footprints, my social media life, upstanders and allies, cyberbullying, and fair use. Common Sense Media remains an incredible curriculum with step-by-step -step lesson plans, PDFs, Google Slides, videos, and interactive learning activities. You'll just need to log in using your teacher email credentials. And now, here are five other resources that I'm keeping my eyes on. The first one is PowerPlay Young Entrepreneurs. My students have created incredible products and learning experiences on the back of this curriculum. They've been guided and supported from the very beginning of the design process to our entrepreneurship fair, post-fair accounting, and reflections by the incredibly talented homeroom teachers on my team. I can't take any of the credit for using this resource, and that's why it's not in my list of seven, but I'm a huge fan. I actually consider this young entrepreneur's market and the process associated with it as the very best example of design thinking, the design process, and PBL. The second tool that I'm keeping my eyes on is Google Sites. It's right there in the Google workspace, so why not use it? This year, I plan to build websites with my fifth graders on Google Sites. The sites can be restricted to traffic within the domain, which is perfect for this age. The third tool that I'm keeping my eyes on is Wavacity. This site just came onto my radar this week, and I'm excited. It looks like a free, stable, no login sound editor. Although my students are too young to publish podcasts to the world, we should be able to have some good recording and editing fun using this app. The fourth resource that I'm keeping my eyes on is not a digital app. It's actually more of an activity or a project. I call it the Cardboard Arcade. Years ago, I toured a school in Delta, BC that featured a middle school cardboard arcade. It was the capstone event for a fantastic design challenge that combined cardboard arcade games with probability-related standards in math. I'd love to try something similar, but I'm working with the limitations of tight classrooms and short periods. Storage and cleanup realities are formidable obstacles in my current context, and I don't have the answers just yet. The fifth resource that I'm keeping my eyes on is called GCF Global. It's been a few years since I've used this website, but GCF Global offers some pretty incredible free resources and courses on the subjects of computer facts, skills, and science. Click on any one of the headings and you'll get the idea of just how much is here. One catch, in its current form, this is basically straight content. No room for creativity or design, so you would have to make some adaptations to integrate those. But it does offer a solid pathway to learning in the areas of computers and communication devices, one of the ministry prescribed modules in ADSD. If you've watched or listened this far, you've got interest in this teaching space, or maybe you know someone who does. Thank you for joining me, fellow nerds. I have questions for you. 
Which tools or apps am I missing? What are the creative riches that I should be sharing with my elementary students? Let me know. In the meantime, let's keep designing, creating, and tinkering, educators. Let's introduce our students to the creative life. Thank you for joining me for this edition of the Teachers on Fire podcast. If you are a teacher and you're involved in design, like I said in the blog to vlog to podcast episode, make sure you reach out, comment, and if you found value here, like the video. Teacher, wherever you are, I want you to take care, share an encouraging message to lift up a fellow colleague and keep that fire for learning burning bright. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go.